Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be playing with something really exciting. I've been having a lot of fun preparing this video and this is using Twitter APIs. As you all know, Twitter is one of the biggest social networks with millions of daily users and as such, it offers a set of APIs to automate your processes, whether it's for your business or for some application you might be exploring. So this video is just an introduction to Twitter API, kind of a Twitter API 101, where we'll explore the basic actions we can do with these APIs. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so in order to use Twitter APIs, we actually need approval from them. The approval process may change in the future, but to do some of the amazing stuff we want to do, we'll first need to have a Twitter developer account. In short, when you do a developer account application, you'll need to specify your use cases, how you'll be using the APIs, and of course, without violating any terms of use, developer terms, etc. I'll just assume you have a developer account and proceed with this tutorial, but definitely have a look at the terms and apply for a developer account as soon as possible. It'll be worth it. Okay, once you have a developer account, we can log in into our developer portal. In there, you'll see the main dashboard. You might have it blank, but I just created a new project called Curious App. If you click on it, we'll get to the app details. In here, you'll need to specify the application permissions you want to grant it, and if you want to enable three-legged auth authentication, which I haven't. We'll talk about authentication in just a second. Then, if you click on keys and tokens, right here, we can generate our consumer keys. Think of this as the username and password of your Twitter developer app when making API requests. And then you can also generate your authentication access tokens. These credentials specify the Twitter account the request is made on behalf of. Myself, I've created the access token and secret. Um, you just need to choose one method depending on the authentication method you want to use. So, which one to use? Let's open up the documentation. Let's go to docs and then documentation and check what's in there. On the first page, you get a nice overview on the various APIs they offer, as well as the various endpoints for each of these APIs the free to use and paid services, etc. Then, if you go to Fundamentals Authentication, you'll see a very well explained introduction to different authentication methods, when to use one or the other, and additional resources like tutorials and how rate limits work. In my case, since I want to use these endpoints, it tells me that I need to create an access and secret tokens, so that's what I did. But if your, your case is different, then go ahead and use another authentication mechanism. If we navigate to rate limits, rate limits depend on the API you're using. So for example, we'll be using API standard v11. There's an explanation on how rate limits work. Um, it applies per endpoint. So different post or get endpoints will have different rate limits. Definitely have a read. Okay, moving on. To interact with Twitter API, we'll be using TweetPy. TweetPy is an open source Python package that allows us to access Twitter API with Python in a very convenient way. It includes a set of classes and methods that intrinsically handle various implementation details such as HTTP requests, authentication, encoding, decoding, rate limits, pagination. So it will make our life much easier when performing actions against Twitter APIs. Okay. Enough chit chat, let's start coding. Okay, I'm gonna create a new virtual environment in my labs folder and activate it. And then once I'm using it, I'm gonna install TwiPy and Jupyter Notebook. Once done, I'm gonna open up a web session by running Jupyter Notebook. Cool. Let's create a new notebook. I'm gonna change the name. Okay, now we can start coding. First, I'm gonna import TwiPy. And in here, I place my credentials, the ones I showed you on my developer account. Don't bother copying my credentials as I will be regenerating them after I finish recording this video. Remember, you should follow best practices on how to set up authentication securely, either reading them from a file, loading them as environment variables or using some secret management tool. Okay, as we've said, I need the consumer key and secret and the access token and secret as well. Now we can authenticate ourselves using auth equal twipy auth handler 
and then we'll pass consumer key and consumer secret. Again, that's how we tell Twitter API the username and password of the developer application is making the API requests. Then we need to set our access tokens and we'll use auth.setAccessToken and pass in access token and access token secrets. And again, this specify the Twitter account the request is made on behalf of. In my case, I'll be using mine, so curious coding YouTube. Once done that, we can create the main API object. So we'll define API equals twipy.api, capital letters, and we'll pass in the auth object and then set weight on rate limit equals true and weight on rate limit notify equals true as well. Cool. This will be the main object we'll use to perform any actions on our Twitter account. If we type dir API, we'll see a list of attributes and methods for this object. As you see, there is a bunch of them, one that we can use, for instance, we can now verify our credentials using API.verify credentials. Great. Okay, so to get the basic information about your Twitter account, we'll usually use api.me and it'll give you your information. Let me just get the JSON output. So in this case, we're seeing my user ID, username, user tag, description, follower and following count, information about my last tweet, etc. So we'll be using this information later on in this video. However, the main actions and probably the ones you want to start looking at first are tweeting, replying to tweets, and maybe following your friends or famous people, right? So let me put this notebook aside and bring in my Twitter feed as well. Great. So let's start tweeting. When you tweet, actually, you are updating your profile status. And on TweetPy, we need to use the update status function. So let's define a new status, for instance, hey, what are you up to? And then type new status equals API update status, my new status. Great, no errors. If we now refresh Twitter, we'll see the tweet right away. Great. Now we want to interact with this tweet, right? We can comment on it, retweet it, or like it. Whatever action we want to do now, though, we will need this ID right here on the URL. So we can get this ID right here. Uh, let me show you the me object. Uh, if we scroll down, you'll find it under JSON, status, and then this ID, right? So we can grab that and assign it to a variable. Let's define latest tweet ID equals api.me underscore json status id then if we check it see the last four digits yeah it's the same one great and now we can use it in whatever action we want to perform for instance we can retweet my last tweet and we can do that with api.retweet and we'll need to pass in the tweet id so latest tweet id See, it has a retweet right away. We can also comment on it, and you can do that by using the same update status function again. You just specify your reply in between double quotes, and then we need to pass in another argument, and that is in reply to status ID equals the latest tweet ID. And we get that comment right away. Great. As you know, on Twitter, you can also include up to four pictures or one animated GIF or one video, right? To add a picture, you need to first load it using the media upload function. So I'll define image object equals API media upload and then load it from my local folder. Um, there is an image in my labs environment. Okay, it's loaded. And then on this object, we will need this information right here. Media ID string, right? So on our update status function, we add our reply in between quotes, then in reply to status ID, latest tweet ID. And finally, you need to pass in media IDs 
and that is an array of strings as we can add multiple pictures and you need to pass in image object dot media id string let's execute it great let's refresh the page and here it is awesome and finally we can give it a like and you do that by using api dot create favorite latest tweet id see now it's it has one like if you want to unlike it then you need to use destroy favorite instead cool so finally to delete a tweet just use api dot destroy status and latest tweet id and it will go away however we won't be deleting the replies of that initial tweet those are a different tweet ids so if you want to delete everything you'll need to loop over the replies and delete them individually otherwise it'll show this message right here saying that the parent tweet has been deleted by the author okay so that's the basics around tweeting so remember to interact with tweets you just need the tweet id so just come up with a way of retrieving a specific tweet and that is the latest tweet of someone famous maybe or a friend of yours maybe the latest tweets of a trending hashtag uh, whatever it is just get that tweet id and react to it if you want me to go over that in another video let me know down below and i'll do a second video on this okay what's next twitter is all about networking right so let's see how we can do that with tweetpy we'll use the api get user function to retrieve a specific user or account information instead of using the me object so i'll define user equals api get user and in between the parentheses, we need to specify the username or a screen name. In this video, I'm gonna use Elon Musk. So we have similar information as before. We see the user ID, username, description, follower and following counts, the number of times he's tweeted, as in statuses count, etc. Let me search Elon Musk on Twitter. It's not that one. Okay. See, yeah, the information matches. Great, so to follow our user, we just need to execute api.createfriendship and pass in the user screen name. Let's rephrase the page. See, now we are following him. Similarly, as the tweet liking, to undo this action, we just need to use the destroy friendship function and pass in the same user screen name. And now we are not longer following him. Great. Again, this is the basic stuff, right? Using this approach, we could get a list of users following a specific account or commenting on a specific hashtag and interact with them somehow. Again, if you want me to go through that use case, let me know in the comments below. And this is just the basic stuff. We haven't even played around sending DMs or potentially interacting when someone mentions us on a tweet. But I think that's enough for an introduction on Twitter APIs. Okay, hope you guys have enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to be part of the Curious family. Since we are on it, follow me on my Twitter and Instagram accounts where I try to post more regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.